This is the pre-lab lecture for Lab 1, Fun with Dimensional Analysis. Even though you should have had these concepts in lab, uh, excuse me, in lecture, we wanted to review them for lab so that you would have a more consolidated location for the material, and hopefully this would help uh, solidify that information. It also cuts down on the pre-lab uh, lecture portion of a lab course, and it will um, hopefully allow you guys to finish your post-lab questions while you're in the allotted lab time. So hopefully it'll help you there. So we're just going to quickly review scientific notation, significant figures, and dimensional analysis. For scientific notation, remember that you have um, both a number or a coefficient and a power of 10. So something like 2.1 times 10 to the 4. It's not 21 times 10 to the 3. It's not 0 0.21 times 10 to the 5. You only have one digit to the left of this decimal. The exponent, this 4, indicates how many spaces the decimal wants to move. So here, for example, we're going to move 4 spaces um, because it is a, a positive number. It is going to indicate that this is a very large number. If it was a negative exponent, it would be a very small number. Okay, So because this 4 is positive, it's really going to be 2. We're going to move it over four spaces, one, two, three, four, and it gives us 21,000, one, two, three, four, okay? Now, that's where our imaginary decimal would be there. If we had something like 2.7, now nah, let's do a different number. If we had something like uh, 4.9 times 10 to the 2, we're going to have a positive exponent here, so we move it over two spaces and fill in with zero, so this is going to be 490. If we had a negative exponent, oops, let's do that in a minute. where we had something like 7.1 times 10 to the negative 3. Here we're going to move in the opposite direction because this negative indicates it's a small number, smaller than 1. 1, 2, 3. Fill in with zeros. So this is 0 0.0071. Now, we could also be doing a calculation, and your calculator spits out something like 86 thousand and we'll go with 860,000. Now to put this into scientific notation, you're going to move the decimal from here over one, two, three, four, five spaces until there's only one digit to the left of the decimal. So this is going to be 8.6 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five just like that. On the other hand, 0 0.00006, we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be 6 times 10, because it's a smaller than one number, negative 5, just like that. Now, you also have to factor in significant figures. When you're looking at significant figures, remember all non-zero numbers count. Sandwich zeros uh, always count. Leading zeros never count. Those are the, number, the zeros before the first non-zero number. And then trailing zeros are the zeros after a non-zero number in a number with a decimal, and they always count. So let's look at this. So if we said 1, uh, let's go with number and number of sig figs. Let's go with 7, has 1, 70, 700, 7,000, 7,000 decimal, 70 has 1, 700 has 1. There's no decimal here, and trailing zeros only count in a number with a decimal. 
So this is also 1, and this is 4. Because there's a decimal, all the trailing zeros count. If we go in the other direction, 0 0.7, 0 0.07, 0 0.007, you get the idea. And we'll just throw in one more, like that. This is a leading zero. It doesn't matter that there's a decimal. It's not after a non-zero number. So this number has one sig fig. This has one sig fig. Same thing here. This guy has leading zeros which don't count and a trailing zero and a number with a decimal that does. So this has got two. Now that's how you identify um, what numbers have uh, sig figs. But when you're doing calculations, it gets a little trickier. Whenever you add or subtract, you're going to use the number with the fewest decimal spaces. So for example, if you had 17 plus 8.1, you would add these in your calculator. To give you a nice 25.1. Now, this guy doesn't have a number there. So you really don't know what this value is. So you can't value this one. You have to round it. Because it's below a 5, you round down to get 25. If, for example, you had 17.45 plus 8.1 here, that would have given us 25.55. Technically, we can't know this number. So we can't go to the second decimal space. So we're going to use this number to round. And this is going to make it 25 point, depending on where you uh, studied. It's probably 25.6. It may be 25.5. Um, down here, if you're talking about multipli not multiplication and division, you want to use the fewest sig figs, not decimal spaces, sig figs. So here, if we had 17 times 8.1, your calculator is going to give you 137.7. There's two sig figs here, two sig figs here, so your answer should only have two. This is about 140. Now guys, a few minutes ago when we were doing dimensional, and, uh, excuse me, when we were doing scientific notation, I never said this out loud, but it's a good idea to really ask your lab instructor, when does my answer have to be in scientific notation? For the most part, if you have something like 8 point something, or um, maybe 17.2, or uh, 0.1, you're probably fine. So a good rule of thumb until you ask your lab instructor is to just go ahead and say you're going to use scientific num notation for any number that is equal to or greater than 100 or equal to or smaller than 0 0.01. It's just a good idea because at this point you're looking at exponents of 2 and so it's just good practice more than anything else. You start getting too many spaces in there, it's really hard to, to see what's going on. So for me, um, and for most people, I think um, you just want to go ahead and confirm with them what, what values to use. So because this is bigger than 100, I'm going to put it in scientific notation. And this is going to be, move your decimal one, two spaces. So this is 1.4, because two sig figs, we don't need the zero there, times 10 to the 2. On the other hand, if we have something like 23.7 times 4, you multiply these two things together, and you get 
94.8. Here you only want one sig fig because this guy has three, this guy has one, so we're going to say that this is really about 90. I'm not going to change that to scientific notation here because it's just the one extra space. As far as dividing goes, maybe you have 11.2 and you need to split that among four test tubes. So you're going to split it between four. This 11.2 divided by four gives us 2.8. Because this has three sig figs, this has one, we're going to round this to 3. I'm going to do just one more because um, I have to pause. Okay, so you can also have um, a number that comes up really, really small, something like maybe um, 4.2 divided by 212. That's going to give you in the calculator something like 0 0.0198. Um, and it gives you a bunch of other numbers too. This 4.2 has two sig figs. This guy has um, three. So you're going to round this to zero point. Um, we need two sig figs, so this is going to make this nine go up, which essentially makes it zero point. Oops. Zero point zero two zero. Now I have two sig figs here. As far as what this means in lab, guys, you want to make sure that when you are doing your measuring, I don't even know how that just happened. Um, you want to make sure that you are reading all known values and one estimated. So if you're measuring a beaker and you're going to measure the diameter of the beaker, for example, so that's what a beaker looks like, you're going to measure the inside of the beaker, inside wall, so we're going to pretend like that's right on, to inside wall. Um, you want to make sure you're only measuring where the fluid is going to be held. And so for that, you want to make sure you read all known numbers. So you're going to go from here to here um, and one estimated. So for example, let's go ahead and make a better ruler, right? This is my uh, zero mark. Maybe this is um, right at one because I couldn't get the zero to line up just right because it's hard to do it on the curve. And this is going to be right at two, and this is 2.1. So we know it's exactly, there's my beaker. We know that this goes from 0 um, till over 2, so we know this 2. We know it's not quite to 2.1. So you need to have some kind of estimated value in there. Um, actually, you know what? Looking at the rulers, this ruler actually has it by 0.2s. So this would be 2 and 2.2. So make sure you guys are reading the ruler you have. You see how many sig figs it's got. Um, because it only has the five ticks, it's going to be between 2 and 2.0 and 2.1. Uh, 2. So it should be right at 2.1. So I have a known value and one that I am estimating. That's going to give me two sig figs. Here, for your thermometer, do the same thing. Honestly, these thermometers are hard to read. Make sure when you are looking at your values, you're reading the uh, fluid at the bottom of the meniscus while you're at eye level. Whether that means you pick it up and hold it up to your eye or you kneel down, depends on your lab instructor, but make sure you are reading the meniscus at eye level. 
Now your thermometer should go to at least 0.1, one decimal space. Not 0.1 per se, but one decimal space. So you want to have one decimal space minimum. Some of them are more specific. This one only goes to uh, one decimal space because of the, the marks. Others will go to two. Your beaker usually is going to have a couple of marks, like, oh, 10 mils, 20 mils. There's only going to be, um, if you have something like here, you can't really read a beaker very well. It's not very specific. It's not very accurate. You're not going to be able to say much, okay? A graduated cylinder is much better. Here it's going to be by 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Um, and so when you have your meniscus, you're going to read it. This is a little bit bigger than 0 0.1, not quite 0 0.2. So it's maybe 0 0.1. Two, who knows? Okay. The idea is you're going to have all known numbers and one unknown, one estimated. Whatever you get on that scale, make sure you're recording your scale every single number that you see, okay? As far as dimensional analysis goes, you're going to take the number you get on the scale when you measure your paper clip and you're supposed to convert it. I think it says to convert it to. Um, well, I don't, I, let's see, where is it? Right, so it's given to you in grams, and it's asking you to convert it to milligrams. We can do that by following these steps. First things first, you're going to make a plan. We need to go from grams that's given, to milligrams. We can do that in one step because we know our conversion factor. There are a thousand milligrams and one gram. So we're going to set it up. We have one arrow, so we need one step. We're going to start with what's given. So maybe your paper clip was 4.910. Actually, the scale you guys are using only has the two. So 4.191 grams, we know every time we have one gram setting up our unit so it cancels, we get 1,000 milligrams. Grams cancels, leaves us with units of milligrams. We get 4.91 times 10 to the third milligrams. Make sure you include this unit or you will get points off. Make sure you have the right number of stick figs or you will get points off. It is imperative that you guys have that information correctly. So let's go ahead and do a little couple practice problems. Convert 20 millimeters to kilometers. Well, our plan, we need to go from millimeters to kilometers. We can't do this in one step because I don't know how many there are. Or even if I do, I'm going to pretend like I don't. But we can go to meters. We can go to that base unit. So we know, for example, that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. And over here, we know that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. You guys really need to know these units for your exam. So I have two arrows, so I need two columns. We're going to start with that given 20 millimeters. Every time we have a thousand millimeters, we have one kilometer, excuse me, one meter. And every time we have a thousand meters, we have a one kilometer. Okay? So we have 20 times 1 times 1 divided by a thousand divided by a thousand. It's going to give you 2.0 times 10 to the minus fifth. Millimeters canceled, meters canceled, we're left with units of kilometers, which is good. Now, guys, when you are doing this type of problem, um, pay attention because the first inclination you have is to write it like this, and it's wrong. And I wanted to do this to show you. Stick figs in 20, how many are there? Hopefully you can see that there are... Um, just the one, right? There's no decimal here, so it's one sig fig. 
This is exact, so there's an infinite number of sig figs. This is also exact, so it's an infinite number of sig figs. Meter, 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 meter. These are the same scale, so we know there's exactly a thousand millimeters in a meter. It's an infinite number of sig figs. So we only need one sig fig, so it's just 2 times 10 to the negative 5 kilometers. How many inches are in 3, 0 0.030 feet? Well, we can go from feet to inches in one step because we know one foot is equal to 12 inches. So we have one arrow, so we need one step. 0 0.030 feet and one foot down here to cancel gives us 12 inches. That's going to give us 0.36 inches. And we need to check our sig figs. This has got two. Leading zeros don't count, but this trailing zero does. This is infinite because inches and feet are from the same system, so we're good. So we want only two sig figs in our answer, and it's going to be 0 0.36 inches. Centimeters and kilometers. So we're given kilometers. We're going to centimeters. Don't know how much is in either, but we can go from kilometers to meters and from meters to centimeters. We can do this because we know that there are a thousand meters and one kilometer, and we have a hundred centimeters and one meter. So we need two steps. We're going to start with what's given, that 25 kilometers. One kilometer means we really have a thousand meters, and one meter means we have a hundred centimeters. That's going to give us something like 2.5 times 10 to the, oh, I'm going to run out of space, 6 kilometers canceled, meters canceled, we're left with centimeters. Checking our sig figs, 25 has 2. This is infinite, so there's 2, uh, it's exact, so there's an infinite number of sig figs, so we're good. So we really only need the 2.5 times 10 to the uh, 6 as our answer, centimeters. Hopefully that kind of helps solidify what this lab is about. If you need more help, make sure you talk to your lab instructor and your group members or your um, colleagues. Um, we will be working through the problems in lab.